I mean, it's uh, the residents don't like being treated as individuals, they like being treated as a group. And uh, the only way they can do that mainly is to prevent people from breaking them down into individuals. So they present one image. Mm -hmm. And whenever somebody would succeed in, in uh, defining the, 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 the people of behind the residents, would it be the end of the group? Uh, no, uh, because it's irrelevant. And uh, no one could ever succeed anyway because there's no way of proving anything. It's, you know, it's not worth the effort of proving anything. The residents would continue to deny it. Well, I think if someone wants, you know, to dig through various people's garbage <laughs> to see if they find some piece of paper that says that the residents are so and so and so and so, well, that's fine. The piece of paper may be incorrect as well. I've seen uh, innumerable lists of who the residents are. I've seen, uh, I've seen it in books where, where the people, you know, like books just on record releases and, and they have copied down the list of people that are on the back of the album. And the people that are listed on the back of the album are always the contributors to the record other than the residents. And I've seen that listed as the residents before. I've seen, I've probably seen at least a dozen different lists of who the residents are that are all different. Is it fun? Well, it's fun sometimes, it's insulting sometimes, and it's irrelevant sometimes. <laughs> well, it wasn't originally wrong. They got with Ralph Records by starting it. When Warners and no one else was interested in their records, they, they thought, well, the thing to do is start their own company. However, you know, their concept of starting a company just meant that they would press records. It didn't have anything at all to do with selling records, so uh, they did press the records and they just sat around in boxes for a couple of years until uh, me and three partners came along to uh, take over Ralph Records and form the Cryptic Corporation. And our idea was to take what they had started and to expand it in to include other uh, acts on the label and other musicians to expand it into like a a real interesting independent label uh, which we did and uh, until just this past year we sold Ralph Records and so now the Crypto Corporation is no longer connected with Ralph Records but the residents are signed back to Ralph Records for on a 4, four LP deal <laughs> residents really think of themselves as musicians they just they think of themselves more as as people with ideas and so it, anything they do just becomes an attempt at realizing some idea and it doesn't matter what the medium is um, you know or whether they're the, even the people that do it they feel totally justified of getting someone else to do entirely something for them they feel like they could do a residence album without ever playing a note on it, as long as it realizes the idea, and the idea included the fact that they would not play on it. So it's, it's, it's more of a, they're more theorists or philosophers in some ways about, about the art. So it's, it's more, I suppose, more traditional art role than, uh, than uh, like a musician who is more like a craftsman who has a skill level and can spread the sheet music out and play their notes. I mean, the residents aren't into that at all. <laughs>
what will be nothing, nothing without a woman. To take us over the road Man made the train say that they tried to be true in some way to the original composer's intent so that uh, they don't want they want to totally rearrange it but they don't totally want to disregard what the original composer had in mind as far as that certain element that makes that composer's music distinctive or, or work in the way it works you know like John Philip Sousa they wanted to keep the timing and the marching quality and the you know, they didn't slow it down, or something like that, which would be like an obvious thing to do, would be to take it out of the March context, but they thought that that, that wasn't fair to what Sousa was. Um, you know, with James Brown, they felt that it still needed to be presented as uh, as soul music and as in a live format of, of a singer interacting with an audience because it's so much what James Brown really is. Yeah, things like that, you know, Gershwin, the, the, the blues quality of the music, uh, the blues jazz quality should still be there. Well, I don't know if it's satirical so much as that the residents work uh, in terms of contrast, often as much as, as in a complementary way. They, well, complementary can mean opposite, like complementary colors are opposite. So they, they think that, uh, that the two composers can, it, that it can highlight uh, each one by making them so different rather than sort of having it blend. You, you know, you, from a record point of view, a lot of people say, well, I only like this side and I don't like that side. And that's, you know, a problem you run into. But uh, the residents feel like if you like this side and you don't like that side, well, then your responsibility is to learn to like that side because there's no reason why you can't like this side if you like this side. So, uh, they don't feel like it's their responsibility to try to to make a record that everybody likes to begin with. So it's uh, they do a lot more of setting the composers against each other, but they're usually related. Um, James Brown and George Gershwin are are both blues people. Um, they just it's two totally different styles of it. One's like like you know, the southern rhythm and blues, um, really emotional. The other one is like urban uh, jazz blues, like New York uh, with, you know, Gershwin's things. But, but Gershwin was still very much interested in blues, and, and it's still there. So they felt like there was a connection there, and they feel like there's a connection with uh, Hank Williams and John Philip Sousa. But the connection's a little bit more oblique because they feel like they're... Uh, that uh, their their childhood, their upbringing was a, was a similar thing. That they were both people who uh, started very young and who were, were real prodigy people. But it's but they were really interested in like when in the, the liner notes at the back of the cover, it pinpoints on both little bios certain ages and what each was doing at certain ages and both things. It's it's. Just one of those things. They just thought it was interesting to uh, to contrast uh, people. I mean, they really are a very extreme contrast.
Well, I, th I feel like right now they're, they, they're putting a lot of concentration on the American Composer series. I, they, um, well, that's another story. I, I think that what they're doing with it is a whole lot uh, is studying various composers to try to understand exactly what it is that makes that composer special. You know, each one has some element that is has somehow communicated with people. And uh, I, they're doing this until 2000, the year 2000. And uh, so I would assume that starting in the year 2000, they have a completely new direction that they're planning to go, which will no doubt be trying to make sense out of the their, their studies here. So there won't be another concept album just that was like the war album? I don't think that they'll necessarily, it's hard for me to say what they'll do because it depends a lot upon what uh, strikes them at the moment, but I know that uh, they're very interested in, in the composer project and it is a, a big project and uh, so I would think that there will be other albums during the time because they continue to write music and they have to do something with it. But I think right now they're very much into a studying period and they they're uh, they, they tend to go through phases anyway and I think they've been they've completed one one section of what their of their their study um, and it's a sort of experimental study of just like being loose and taking a, a real fresh approach toward making noises. But I feel like they, they're now past that point and they're now into a new era where they're now studying uh, composers and, and which will no doubt make them more sophisticated. And then I think that the next, the third section will be them actually doing what they're going to do. individual artists, like the very most popular, most mainstream artists that there are. Um, you know, if you took Michael Jackson or Prince or Bruce Springsteen or Madonna, any of the, if, if each one just lived on an island all by themselves, they would still be interested in music and they would still make music. But none of them would sound alike at all. They would all each be totally different from each other and they're different now in a lot of ways but they're still they're still lining up somewhat culturally with the music and I think that the residents are very much that way the residents are actually more distinctive than the than, uh, than the, the mainstream um, so I feel like if you had a situation where every person that worked in music actually worked isolated from all the other people working in music, we would have a very rich variety of uh, music. And 
and it, it would probably be very interesting. Um, although, at the same time, to give credit to these people that I've named, especially to uh, to someone like Prince or Michael Jackson, even, um, I feel like in both cases, those two people are perhaps making music very similar to what they would actually do on the on the island. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, uh, I, I mean, he's he's fantastic at what he does, but he's so heavily dependent upon fifties music, fifties and sixties music that I don't uh, I don't feel like if he was on the desert island that he is doing what he would do. Possibly, uh, once again, it's it's hard to generalize like that. Probably the the ultimate all time American band within my generation uh, was the Beatles. Um, I don't think anyone has made American music like the Beatles. Um, as far as American pop goes, obviously there's there's a whole another world of blues or jazz that's, uh, that I'm not connecting here to clarify that. Uh, I don't know if the residents are as much American as they're just uh, doing what they do and they happen to be Americans. So they're drawing off an American culture. The Beatles, I think, were more able to really distill what the American culture was and partly because they weren't Americans and feed it back to America. So I, in a lot of ways, it's the, the Beatles were, were more processed and being processed is sort of part of what America is. Um, one of the things that that the residents felt like from the very beginning was that that the Beatles were the best when they were the Beatles and when they weren't John Paul George and Ringo that is John Paul George and Ringo that uh, that it brought out too many of the, of the human traits and the human faults and uh, they liked the processed thing called the Beatles which they thought was you know, the unit was was stronger than the individuals trying to present some of the material in a, in a way that it hasn't been heard before, but still without losing what, uh, in the case of Sousa, what they feel like Sousa really was trying to do and was trying to sound like. The whole side is presented as a parade. You know, motion moving through the speakers is all part of it. Um, it's bombastic and it's, uh, it's real fast and and real upbeat and real energetic and and relentless. I mean, you're just like it's it's exhausting to listen to that side because there's just no rest in it at all. Your ears hurt by the time it's over. But that's what Susan's all about. I don't know if it's really so much that it's tongue in cheek, so much as um, the residents do like to surprise with certain sounds. They like to combine sounds you don't normally hear. But I truly do not think that Sousa was any different from that. I think Sousa in the 1800s was doing exactly what the residents are doing for the 1980s. He was combining surprise sounds and surprise things and was amusing people just as much as, uh, as the residents having updated it to, to the current times of combining, you know, marching electric guitars with marching grand pianos and things. It's I mean, I think Susan very much would approve of uh, the treatments. I, I, I admit that it's, it's got a lot of musical in-jokes type thing where things are being played counterpart to each other. 
but uh, you know I don't think that for the most part people listen to it are just going to like burst out laughing and some probably will <laughs> just think that all these people are known um, or else they wouldn't be doing them to begin with you know they, they know them uh, as far as Europe you know for Europe it's obviously going to be a little different when you're dealing strictly with American composers I mean if they were dealing with only with Dutch composers I suppose it would be difficult for people in America to know who they were even harder but uh, I, I think that I think they're very much into their own culture if people in Europe don't know Hank Williams or John Philip Sousa well perhaps they will now or some of them will uh, and they, they should be known they're they're important particularly um, for like Hank Williams is is Hank Williams is like originated so many of the country and western cliches people every time they listen to country and western music they just think that you know it came out of the out of the air but it <laughs> Hank Williams you know did so many of these things well that's a hard one because it changes just regularly I keep hearing different names come up um, there are so many different people that that the residents are interested in in studying that uh, it's really hard to say who they'll do next but I know people on their listing include uh, people like Bob Dylan or, or uh, Burt Bacharach uh, Richard Rogers or Rogers and Hammerstein and Rogers and Hart uh, Cole Porter Duke Ellington, Charles Mingus, lots of different jazz people, Stan Kenton, um, different people in the in folk, Woody Guthrie, uh, people in uh, gospel, James Cleveland. Uh, there's just there's they really want to touch, eventually touch every facet of of American music, and someone who has contributed. Primarily, who who has really contributed to such a degree that it has had an, a, a lasting impact in the direction that uh, American music has taken. Uh, they're also interested in people like Charles Ives and uh, and Aaron Copland, though they're obviously much more difficult to do. Their um, their music is so sophisticated.